Hello everyone, this is Defense Politics Asia and this is the conclusions. And uh, so this this some this is why I love the conclusions. Uh, because the situation report there's a such a thing as running out of time for the situation report because the SIP rep is the a summary of the past day's action. And when the day is past too long, then doing a SIP rep you know, becomes pretty pointless. The longer the, the, the later you I record the SIP rep, the the more irrelevant the SIP rep becomes. And this is something that have plagued me for the past two and a half years until you know I decided to put conclusion at its own uh, series and you know and that really helps because now I really indeed it's too late to do to record a situation report it would be pointless because the U in Ukraine the, the the 20th of September is about to be over but but to talk about conclusions you know it's all right you know because i can still sum up most of the things but i don't go into details about every single thing then tomorrow i can do a sum up of the the situation for two days and things might still work so so welcome to this to the conclusions and uh the past on the on the past day actually i i, I didn't manage to record because i was out for football so yeah, I, I, I managed to map, but I didn't have time to record. So, no, that's unfortunate. So, a few of the major things is the, the Russians are still on the offensive and the situation in Zaporizhia continued to be very tense. Um, we have, this time around, fighting on the uh, this western part of the stuff. Previously, the, we have the fighting on the eastern part of this eastern half of the Zaporizhia. This time around, it's on the western half. We have fighting reported in Piatikaki. Novo Andreevka, Novo Denilevka, and Robotine. This information is coming from the Ukrainian Defense Ministry. They are reporting the, that the Russians are attacking in this direction. And it's getting a bit regular. Like 7 to 19, you have this Andreevka, the 17 and 19. Robotine, you no know, 19, previously was on the 16. It's getting a bit more and more regular. So, and uh, Mala Tomashka, of course, the 17 to 18, previously there was 11 to 12. That, so the, the Russians are, you know, are probing and uh, they are probing the, the Ukrainians in these directions. And so there is something to definitely to watch uh, for the Zaporizhia region. Uh, offensive of course continues there, there's a lot of offensive if you know if you follow dpa you probably should already know in the donetsk front we have similar situation uh fighting at rifno pill now you no know, zolata neva voleda towards bohov yeferenka towards katerinivka konstantinivka Giorgivka. so uh, a lot of actions all around the place uh target is kurakove and circumvent uh you no know, encirclement of Voleda. So this and double encirclement actually in fact. So we shall see you know how this continue to develop. Um over in the Pokrov front, Pokrov offensive is also ongoing, but uh, of significance is, is of course some updates over in the Nevelsky salient, uh, which is over here, this salient here. The Russians finally have some progress. Updates coming from the Ukrainian mapping where the Russian forces have secured south of Kalivka as well as south of Kalisinivka. So this is pretty big. This is quite a big amount of grounds. It's, it's one, uh, 6 6.65 square kilometers of grounds being uh, taken by the Russian fo uh, by the Russian forces. And uh, because the line is so straight, most likely these are uh, aggregated aggregate one the likely the the front line may actually be much more further up front but the i have expected this front to entirely collapse because uh, the risk of encirclement in around this area is actually pretty high uh, somehow the ukrainians decided to stay and fight so they are staying and fight at this region here uh, so you know the people fighting at the most front line must be pretty depressed uh, i mean yeah because if if you are supposed to escape you no know, the distance is also pretty far imagine trying to run 10 kilometers <laughs> it, it, i'm quite sure when they try to escape there will be no cars for them you no know? because cars if the russians are on the major offensive cars and and armored vehicles will be prime target for fpb drones so they would have to run or walk out 10 kilometers will take them you no know, a few hours so it's going to take a long time and at the risk of you no know, 
hitting their own mines, FPV drones and whatnot. So yeah, but no, that's war, no. Yeah, anyway, it's the same, I guess. Um, Pokrov uh, situation remains the same. The Russians are pushing this time round. The updates, the frontline changes update seems that the, to suggest the Russians are pushing up the railway. So uh, there's, there's this railway, railway line that leads all the way up to Pokrov. The Russians is now pushing towards uh, along the uh, the north of Novohorodivka along the railway line. So I'm not sure if they will continue like they used to from the Progress region. Uh, previously they from the progress region they just push all the way all the way along which was uh, amazing to watch so this time around let's see how this goes uh the, the it looks like the, there's no more progress west of uh novo Horodevka, this as much as we have at this moment ukrainians are having a strong position around marinevka they are push they are pushing the russians in this area or at least uh keeping the the russians in check the dual location of a tank getting destroyed by a russian does shows that the U ukrainians are serious they are sending tanks and uh, you know heavy vehicles to 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 plug this leak that is currently happening you know in the pokrov front so otherwise the rest of the front line looks pretty static so that's about it uh, in the pokrov front uh, other areas of course thorax offensive you know the the new york offensive continue uh, we're fighting still continue to be mentioned is Dashne. Dashne continue to be mentioned and uh, Torex there is some major updates where the Russians captured most of the high-rise buildings fighting is is still mentioned at Shebenivka uh, Sheben, uh, which is weird because the front line is really far away so we have fighting in Nelipivka and New York so uh, the major things of course is the Ukrainians disclaimed uh, this area here is now Russian uh, west of New York. Previous, this was previously claimed by the Ukrainians, but now no, yeah, it's in, they invalidated themselves, and uh, this area here, the high rise zone, is now fully conquered by the Russians. Um, it's not much of a fortress. You know, some people call this the citadel. You know, they copy what I used to call the high rise area of Bakhmut. Yeah, somehow it just been used by everybody, somehow, and uh, but not every high-rise areas are citadels and and in today's age with the advent of uh fab the, the the glide bomb by the russian side uh i don't think citadels are no longer viable uh like fortified positions become in non-viable in the ukraine war at, at this moment it's no longer workable because the bombs are getting way too big and there's no way to stop them 3,000 kg bomb can just glide towards you and just destroy everything. And this is kind of horrifying. Like, yeah, even if you are in bunker, you die. Then and you're you and you don't even need to be like in range of a TOS, a toss, you no know, thermobaric rocket uh, launching system. And even the 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 toss, the new version of the toss have greater range than the old one. I think they call it toss too. But uh, I'm, I haven't objectively seen it in action per se, but uh, just assume for now that uh, if the Russians do use the toss again, so far we don't see much of the toss at this moment. But if the, the toss uh, come back again, then they probably have greater range than they before. Or maybe they will have to use up all the older rockets first, and then they will start to use a longer, longer range one. That is also possible. So, uh, yeah, that is another horrifying weapon that just kills everybody. So, yeah, this is the situation. Um, over in the bug mode, nothing serious, to, no, nothing interesting to talk about. There's fighting reported Zelinyanske, but I always say I'm, I look, look, I always look at this highway region, but no, nothing ever happens. I feel very scammed. Um, the civil offensive also continues. There is still fighting in these areas. Vukan Kanyamsky, even on Darivka, Vimka, but no, nothing much per se. Uh, Sviatovay front. The main thing is uh, Makievka. Uh, Makievka is on the verge of capture by the Russian forces. The latest geolocations show the Russians have a lot more grounds that the Ukrainians uh, give credit, credit to them for. There is still a little bit of Makievka left uh, for the Russians to take. And the Russians previously was heading south. So I haven't mapped anything from the 20th of September. So I'm not sure if there's more updates regarding this. 
But I think Makievka is now on the verge of collapse, on the verge of capture by the Russian forces. And of course, this will ch shape the strategic situation over here by quite a bit because there will be no more anchor for the Ukrainians, probably only at Krakivka. So the Russians can then push out in a lot of directions and they will be able to you know, uh, straighten the front line down to Nevsky. So this would shape the front line quite, by quite a bit. And uh, Pistani situation that doesn't feel like the Russians are pushing very hard. So uh, but Khaki front, nothing serious to talk about. Over at the Kursk region, uh, the Ukrainians and the Russians situation is it's a stalemate. Um, there is no success. The Ukrainians are attacking uh, very heavily in the Veseloye region and uh, uh, the Novi Put region. Put, put, put. And uh, then also attack at uh, Medzeve. But no, it's not working. They are not, uh, they are not breaking through. The Ukrainian, I see some of the titles, you no, know, of new Ukrainian videos or some of the haters in the tweets. They are claiming that oh, they are trapping the Russians, uh, forces who are doing the counter offensive. What trapping? Oh my God, it's like coping, man. How to trap you? The, the Ukrainians are trapped. The Ukrainians are trapped within the curse salient. R not the Russians are trapped. The Ukrainians are desperately trying to relieve the forces that is now getting getting smashed and attacked over in the western flank. That is what ha what's happening. It's not the Russians getting trapped. How do you trap the Russians? You, they didn't even manage to stop the Russians from crossing the freaking river at Grushkovo. So the Russians are just... Woo! We just cross the river, you know, easily cross the river, and then have enough forces for them to do a ma the counter offensive. What trap? So the yeah, there's a bit kind of ridiculous. So um, and uh, there is information coming from the pro-Russian sources, uh, talking to, uh, uh, coming from the situation on the ground, saying that uh, Vofino, as well as Krasno Krasno Otoburski is under Russian control. This is coming from uh, subscribers of uh, Raiba saying that the Russians are here and the Ukrainians did not take the position. So the town, the two village is still under Russian control. So which means that the, the Ukrainian attack over Krasno Otoburski has failed. And the Ukrainians have, are now doubling down on Novi Put, Opogovka and Vesuloe. And freaking hell, this is such a small place. This is only two and a half, two, maybe three kilometers. And they still didn't break, didn't break out from this area here. So you no, know what trap? I think the Ukrainians are trapped. So the the Russians, however, is not pushing uh, it much from this area. Um, honestly, this area is also very big. Like the front line is around thirteen kilometers. Uh, and this advance, the Snagos, uh, Snagos salient from Vef uh, Vef uh, Vishnevka to the furthest point just off uh, the Tostik look. It's around 12 kilometers. The Russians did capture back a lot of grounds. Uh, it's a huge place. Uh, this Ukrainian capture is a huge place, despite it's mostly just countryside, but it's still a huge place. So if it's contested, it will still take a long time uh, to clear out. The Russians are still hitting on Lyubimovka, uh, Kostiluk, Darino, and uh, Nikolaevo Darino. This is still the main push that the Russians are trying. The Ukrainians are counter-attacking Obikovka and in the Lyubimov, uh, Lyubimovka region, they are still trying. And uh, so far, it is seemingly a stalemate. Seemingly, because it could be a fact of fog of war and there is no frontline updates, no intel, no footages to indicate frontline changes. It could be just simply that. Because this is a contested zone, which means that information are all operational secrets. So we are not going to get such much information until you know, the respective forces uh, decided to let us know. Uh, and uh, for the new people following DPA, uh, it's a great time to tell you this quote that I always say. Everything that you see on the internet is because someone wants you to see it. So similarly, in this war, everything that you see from this war, all the drone footages, all the hor horrible images, the battle scenes, all is because someone wants you to see it and they have their own objective, they have their own narrative, they have their own insidious uh, no aims when they publish all these videos. So they, they have a they have they have this uh, no no division of posting all these things 
on how to manipulate how you feel. So just understand everything that you see is because someone wants you to see it, which means that if they, they don't want you to see something, they will not publish it. And so everything you see is propaganda. Everything you see is not reality. This is just a slice of reality. So don't assume the videos as reality. It's just a signal of what could be happening on the ground. So, so I, I think this is just a very, very important note that no, because the aim of DPA uh, is to is to help to educate and get people to get used to it, to get used to you know understanding how media work, how journalism work, how information warfare works, and don't get duped. That's the aim. I'm not here to feed you bullshit. No, I'm here to to get you to realize how to you know see through the bullshit. And yeah, and if you if you feel emotional about any single issue, then uh, I have a bad news for you. You are getting manipulated. So be it whatever war zone, whatever political issue, if you feel emotional, then you have to look at yourself from your third eye and realize that you are getting emotional and something is not right. Why are you emotional? What do you read? What do you see? Who published this thing that let you feel this way always question everything so oh that sounds like rt you know because rt's tagline is question more yeah then it's not question everything no dpa defense politics asia question everything no yeah so anyway uh the russians and the uh, russians are still pushing towards black Hovo as well in the southern southern front the ukrainians are counter attacking at burki so this is the only other active front line other than the western flank or the other attacks that is uh, listed here just to give a pinch of salt this could be just shellings this you no know, these are all sh possibly uh, shelling temples uh, but no these, these are not necessarily a russian attack ukrainians are still you know trying to push for Crimea, uh, Crimea Noe, which is weird because uh the inf Russian defense uh, defense ministry, uh, Russian defense ministry say that the Ukrainians try to attack in the direction of Crimea Noe. Ukrainian mapping claims Crimea Crimea Noe is under Ukrainian control. So, who is coping here? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know who is coping here. So anyway, uh, otherwise the situation is uh, pretty shitty for everyone. Everyone is just dying, and uh, yeah. So anyway, thank you for watching. Uh, this is just a conclusion, just a quick, uh, just a quick go through of the situations happened in the in the day before, uh, for the nineteenth of September, twentieth of September. I haven't mapped it yet. I'll map it onto the same map right here, and because I'm gonna do a two day sit wrap tomorrow, so yeah, hopefully this uh you no know, this is helpful for you, and I'll see you guys in the next update. And also for the people who like to watch the DPA open mic. Uh, it will not be on Saturday because tomorrow I will be going to watch the Singapore Grand Prix. So uh, the F1, Formula 1, Singapore Grand Prix, I bought tickets and it's so expensive. Oh my God, it's so expensive. So anyway, uh, so I'm bringing my family there to watch. So it's, yeah, it's, back. it's so expensive. So yeah, it's the day two of the qualifying. I'll be watching that. Then, which is why uh, I don't think I have the energy to do the open mic. So it will be on Sunday. So yeah, we missed last week. So hopefully, you know, yeah, you'll be more exciting, I guess. See you guys. Have a great weekend.